The entire Caribbean economy is something like the size of Kansas and Oklahoma, perhaps combined. It's, it's not a particularly large economy. And yet China's investments are huge compared to the size of the economy. And given this sort of absence of abundant natural resources, one has to wonder, what's it all about? Some say it's about uh, Taiwan and sovereign recognition. That might be part of it. Some of it certainly might be resources. But some of it is, as we discussed earlier, political votes, right? The ability to actually buy votes in the United Nations or in other bodies where these states have, you know, one vote just like any other country. And of course, there's another component to it, which is more speculative. But almost every great power rival that the United States has ever faced has cared to some degree about Latin America as a way of tying the United States down. That's certainly true in the First World War with the Zimmerman Telegram, in which Germany tried to bring Mexico on its side to provoke a conflict between Mexico and the United States. It was true in the Second World War, when German and Italian submarines operated to some degree, initially with impunity in parts of Latin America and the Caribbean, to put pressure on the Panama Canal. It was true during the Cold War, where the Soviet Union was famously involved in Latin America, not just in Cuba during the Cuban Missile Crisis, but in parts of Central America, and where its involvements went beyond uh, missiles, but also potentially airfields and small submarine facilities. And the question now for us is if U.S.-China competition really intensifies, will China pursue its interests in Latin America, not for economic and political purposes strictly, but also for military purposes? And really, that's a question that we're going to find the answer to in the next five to ten years.